Hello you guys, hello. It is Tuesday, about 11, no, about 12 o'clock. I gotta do a uh, walk and talk for you guys. Couple things I wanna talk about before it gets too hot. This is one of the hottest weeks we're gonna have here in the Philippines. So I got a topic I wanna bring up. Let's say hi to this girl here. Looking all floral. Look at you and your beautiful outfit. Looking all spring. Are you playing today? Yeah, I'm ready to Where at? Excel. Excel? Oh, okay. All right, well, have fun. Good yeah, luck. Yeah, thank you. See you. So, hit that intro and we'll get on with what we need to talk about today. Walking down Fields Avenue here. We're gonna take a turn on Narciso. Go all the way down to Candy Palace, turn around, come back, maybe stop in at a couple businesses, check it out. What I wanna talk about today is I'm going home here in a couple weeks. I'm gonna be there for two weeks. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody, family and friends. It's been a while, it's been uh, almost two years. September will be two years. <laughs> hello, hello, no. There goes Todd. So I'm interested to see what it's going to be like. Am I going to be able to handle it? I know I've slowed down. I'm a lot more relaxed living here in the Philippines. I no longer am on medications than I was because I was jammed up in the States. I think everything's going to be fine. I just don't know how much time friends and family and everybody's gonna have for me which is all right too I understand that I'm not there to hang and socialize for very long I will see everybody which is gonna be great Matt and Verno I look forward to seeing you guys I don't know if you guys still do coffee in the mornings or how that works I'll reach out as soon as I get to town find out a job site that you guys are at and I'll swing through and see you if that's still possible ask Mike if that's cool Mike and Hannah if you wouldn't mind Ooh, a little breezy. Hopefully not too breezy for the camera here. Look at this gentleman's, this gentleman's hot rod, rusty nail. That's quite the trike there. I'm also looking for somebody here on the street. Maybe I'll run into him and this will change the whole vlog, but until I find that individual, I'll just keep doing my walk and talk. The main topic I want to talk about is family. I've never really told you guys about my family and what, um, how it all went and, and where I grew up. I'm sure I, you know Minnesota. But just real quick, when I was nine, year old, nine years old, my parents got divorced. My father decided to move to Annandale where we had a cabin on a lake and my mother stayed in the cities down on 52nd and Humboldt. I'll be showing these locations when I get back to Minnesota just to kind of document my life. Uh, it just didn't work out. And back at that time, it was uh, 1978. Divorce wasn't that common. I'm sure it was frowned upon. It's still frowned upon in a lot of religions and all that, but back then it was something crazy. My mother couldn't afford the house in the cities there, so she moved to a suburb, moved to Richfield, Minnesota. Where I lived with her for a couple years with my brother and sister so there was three of us and my mother being a single mother trying to raise three children did not work out so my brother went to live with my father a year before my sister and I went to live with my father and that was probably the worst move that we could have made back in our lives us being 9 11 12 13 years old we didn't know what was going on. Mother couldn't afford raising us. There was no child support. There was nothing settled back then. So we went to live with my father. The reason I say it was the worst, worst thing that could have happened is my mother didn't want to give us up, but she knew she couldn't afford us and she couldn't foresee what would be happening after she made that decision. 
I'm going home here in two weeks for my father's funeral. Uh, I'm sorry that he has passed, but it's uh, he's in a better place. Really loved my father. But there were some times in my life after we moved up to the cabin lake home, things took a turn for the worse, I would probably have to say. My dad started dating and remarried eventually. Hey! <laughs> my dad remarried and our stepmother came into the picture. I don't know what their problem was. I don't think they ever wanted to have children. And then when we moved in, things went sour. My stepmother wasn't the nicest of ladies. She took control, got her nails set in, and our lives took a change for the worse. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not here to bash my stepmother. I'm just here to tell how it was when we were growing up. Like everybody, we had our chores lists. Um, I just want to say she was a little bit more extreme than most. We couldn't have friends over. There was no trust in the household. There were days when we had to stay outside until my parents got home before they'd even unlock the door for us to go in couple hours waiting and waiting after there was some trust built up there was always the responsibility of cooking dinner for them before they got home which is okay but if things had gone sour or if we went to visit our mother every other weekend when we got home we were interrogated she wanted to know exactly what happened what we all talked about what we did it ended up getting into a yelling match. Camera's starting to act funky because it's so darn hot out here. So I think I left off saying that it ended up getting into a yelling and screaming match. Sometimes that would last so long. She just liked to yell. And then she'd tell my father, don't you have something to say? And my father would say, okay, you learned your lesson. Don't do it again. And then she'd yell at him for that's all you have to say. She just liked carrying things on and on and on and on. Just beat it into us what we were doing wrong, what our inadequacies were. It wasn't, it wasn't a fun life. The physical, the emotional, the mental abuse that my brother, sister, and I took sure made us survivors. Hi guys, I stopped in at I-5 Car Rentals. Again, the best place in town to rent from. This is Joel helping me out I made a mess I was I was tracking oil on this can here so well thank you again Joel yes sir. hopefully people will come and take advantage of you what? again the best car renter in town so I'll see you next time see you, sir. Have a good day. See you. what I had to do is steal some air conditioning to cool the camera down everybody the camera's been acting up I'm gonna tell you a quick story here remember back in the day when Ann ran into that van Kokomo's van uh, well, I paid for a rental for Kokomo's to get their van fixed um, when their van was in the shop. When they rented that van, they got it in an accident. A trike hit this van. So uh, it wasn't the luckiest of scenarios for the Kokomo's people. And that's been a while now. Hello. And that van I just showed you has not been fixed yet. It's been a couple months probably now since that all transpired the gentleman on the trike that hit that maroon van right there was a student so joel cut him a break and said i know what you're going through you have no money i'm not going to expect you to pay and let him go of course kokomo's doesn't pay didn't want to pay uh the reason joel had the reason Joel had cut him a break as well is back in the day when he was a young boy going to school, he ran into somebody's van or vehicle and that guy cut Joel a break. That's the guy from I-5 Car Rentals there. So he paid it back to the gentleman that hit his van there, his rental van. So what goes around comes around. So my, before my camera overheats again, I'll keep going with my story about our stepmother not being the nicest of ladies and affecting our lives. Sister had many blown relationships. I've had a marriage and a divorce. My brother had one marriage and divorce. Um, 
it's it's just been tough you know you don't know for years after everything has happened why you're not able to hold a relationship you don't know the personal damage that was done while you're in your most vulnerable years of your life your childhood and your father's not strong enough to stand up for his own children when his wife your stepmother is being abusive and overpowering so hopefully somebody out there in the world if you hear this and you're in a situation or you know of a situation like that you're able to get some people some help or to let them recognize hello I'm good let them recognize that you're not in a healthy environment you may be affected long term by something like this or if you're noticing them failing in life for a while if you can backtrack to a situation similar and let them know that things will be all right if you search out help if you go to counseling if you do some personal maintenance healing you know things will be all right you will get through it it'll make you a better person even though what you're in right now may not be fun maybe the, the worst times of your life there are places to seek assistance to tell your story to get away from some of this don't let it change your life forever find help plenty of people out there willing to help speaking of families I'm gonna wrap this up I'm gonna wrap this up with a good note this week banana man here in an Angeles City who feeds the hundreds of children a week him and I had met at Envy the other morning we're gonna do a collaboration we're gonna get together before too long we're gonna be bringing some of that struggles and and rewards and all this to the channel soon I look forward to going down and helping out to bringing it to you guys and showing some of the struggles that some of these Filipino single mothers go through single families it's 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 a sorry thing here obviously the Philippines is, is overpopulated there's reasons for all that that we'll divulge later in the channel but I'm looking forward to a collaboration with him and us and bringing that to all you guys it's hot I'm gonna quit babbling I'm overheating I've done my walk for the day I'm going home to edit we'll see you guys stay cool Yeah, yeah, we met a couple of subscribers Bermuda, today. You guys from Bermuda? We met Bermuda oh, good, last good, night good. for dinner. We, we had some subscribers. <laughs> and we met uh, Denver the oh, day before Denver, that. Denver, Colorado. Yep. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, that's the guy, Ahmad. Ahmad. Ahmad, is that his name? That, that's yeah, his given name. Oh, Ahmad. I see, I'm sorry, I forgot your name again. But I do remember Dennis from last night from Bermuda. What a guy, what a guy. Anyway, you know what time it is. It's Adrian time. All right, shout out to Little Jack from Temple Street, LA Cali. Shout out to Occasional Dunsters. Shout out to Dennis from Bermuda Island. Shout out to Dave from USBI. Shout out to Rafael Maldonado. Shout out to David Melson. Shout out to Jason from Northern Cali. Shout out to Kevin Agi from Arkansas. Shout out to Bruce Senator from Central Florida. Shout out to Alan Collins from Florida. Shout out to John from Wisconsin. Shout out to Pete from Newcastle, Australia. Shout out to Bruce from Warwick, Queensland. Shout out to Amy Reeves from Broom, Western Australia. <laughs> Shout out to John Hale from Missouri. Shout out to Roman Ari from Austin, Texas. Shout out to Ahmed from Denver, Colorado. Shout out to Hungarian OC. Shout out to Patrick from Malaysia. Shout out to uh, Sandra Cigar from Malaysia. Shout out to Henry from Chicago, Illinois. Shout out to Nick and Matt from Hawaii. Shout out to Glenn from Mikey. Shout out to Glenn and Mikey from Hawaii. Shout out there to Steve go. and Ronald from Hawaii. Shout out to JJ and Justin from Austin, Texas. Shout out to Mason and Michael from Okinawa, Japan. Shout out to Elijah RB from Aspen, Virginia. Shout out to Single at 40. Shout out to Focus in Asia. Shout out to CJ Broad. Shout out to Betty and Betty's Philippine Ivy George. Shout out to Brent Travels. Thank you for watching, subscribers. <laughs>
Speaking of Malaysia, Bill Cooper. Bill Cooper, hey, always good to see your messages and stuff. What's the capital of Malaysia? Malaysia, uh, uh, capital is uh, Kuala Lumpur. Bird? Oh, uh, national bird, uh, wait a minute. National bird, uh, uh rhinoceros ho hornbill. Oh, I thought we had you. How about the flower? The flower, uh, hibiscus. Australia? On uh, capital is Canberra. Canberra, okay. Na national flower, uh, golden wattle. National bird, uh, emu. Nice. Uh, okay, back to the United States. All Colorado. Right. Oh, state capital, Denver. State bird, uh, lark bunting. State flower, marijuana. Oh, no, 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 not marijuana. <laughs> I I'm just joking. State flower, Columbine. <laughs> I like marijuana. <laughs> Ohio. State capital, Colombo. State bird, cardinal. State flower, carnation. Illinois. State, uh, state capital, Sprinkle. State bird, northern yeah. cardinal. State flower, violet. <laughs> see, see? Uh, you can't stump them. You can't stump them. And what do you got? What are your shout-out shout out today? Shout-out to... Uh, Edgar and Jenny Cruz, and to my family. Ooh, coming soon. Yeah. Soon. Here in two weeks, they'll be here. Yeah. yeah so you guys know what to do. Hit that thumbs up. Give us a comment if you'd like. Subscribe if you haven't. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much.